Hello there, children. Hey, Chef. Ooh, call the doctor. Hey. Come here. Come here. <laughs> now get the fuck out of here. Hey, Jason, Hello. what's up? Hey, how's it going? It's going all right. How are you doing? Doing great. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for thanks for being here. I don't know if you remember um, me, meeting me last year at the con before the concerts. OK, I do. Yeah, of course. That was of course. At the yeah, at the concert. The uh, yeah, for the you guys came to the um to the screening in Boulder. Yep. I wanted yeah. to, but I, I couldn't get there in time so that's right she right. she yeah. was there yeah we're talking now so that's what's important right exactly <laughs> exactly so for those of you who don't know and i'm assuming everyone does know because they better know or i'll be pissed <laughs> off this is jason McHugh, and he was the executive producer and actor in cannibal the musical and i have both of my versions of the dvd right here nice <laughs> Had that first that version forever. One. Oh, you got the second version? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you also worked on Orgasmo. And the first season of South Park, you had a hand in, didn't you? Yes. Yes. All, all the above. All That's the awesome. Above. Yes. Uh, yeah. So we just have some stuff we wanted to ask you and just have a, a little bit of everything. South Park, Cannibal, maybe some Orgasmo and... Whatever you have time for. Yeah, yeah. Let's discuss. Let's All right. Discuss. You have the, you want to get started, Sarah? Sure. Um. Yeah, I was wondering, Um. just like to start off, what was, what was the thing, what, what got you interested in filmmaking and what was your like original career ambition when going to film school? Uh. Well, you know, I would, you know, CU Boulder is not a film school per se. I mean, now it's more popular mm -hmm. as a film school, but I, so I just went to CU Boulder because I had some very close friends who went there and uh, I love the Colorado and Boulder vibe, you know, I uh, grew up in Northern California. And so um, I was excited to, you know, move to Colorado. Um, and so uh, and then once I was in Colorado, um, I knew I wanted to do something creative. Both my parents are artists. And so I wanted to do something creative, but not necessarily, you know, fine art, which is what they were both doing. And so I took um, a filmmaking class with this guy, John Yonacito at CU Boulder. And uh, and it was awesome. I had a great experience and just um, really enjoyed his class and the filmmaking. And so I kept going and took another class. And I was also at the same time taking acting classes because I enjoyed acting. Um, and that's where I met uh, Dean Bahar for the first time. And even Dean and Trey and I all shared an acting class together. <laughs> and so... Uh, so I enjoyed acting. I took, I did take some fine art classes and photography classes as well. Um, but film just kind of was like the most challenging, you know, and, um, and the more I did it, the more I got into it, you know, so, um, so I kept going. Um, and after, you know, doing, I guess, a couple semesters of film classes, I decided I wanted to be a film major at that point. So. Um, okay. So you kind of just found your way into it. Yeah. Yeah. Just the, just, I just, just by trial, trial and error you know, got into it and just, yeah, just more gyrated into it. And, you know, I really, um, the CU film program was, was really cool too, because, um, you know, it was very collaborative. So you just ended up collaborating with people that you liked, you know, you found the gyrated towards the people that you liked and, you know, you were spending your weekends making movies with, with this, you know, you know, different, you know, groups of people, um, and different classes, over the years and that's that's definitely sort of how the first bonds were created um you know with with trey and matt and and ian harden and you know all the all the people that you know um were part of cannibal the musical really stemmed from that cu boulder creative filmmaking sort of playground that was created there yeah that's that's awesome i i kind of I, I think our our next question was going to be like, how did you meet those guys? But you kind of answered that. Did you ever see that movie, um, Clash of the Titans? Oh, with the Greek mythology stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to sound like a queer or nothing, but I think unicorns are kick ass. Yeah, we just like you'd basically you'd find like you know the people that you know 
that you agreed upon and creatively the most. And that's, that's, you ended up working with the most, you know? So, and like, so with like Trey, Matt and I, like we, uh, and Ian too, we were all like big fans of Monty Python, you know, that was like, kind of like, if there's, there's one like unifying factor with us all that we all, we all love Monty Python. So that's awesome. I've been, I've been catching up on that. I never, I never watched it. Like I only just now like kind of made myself start watching it and it's great. Yeah. Oh, I've seen yeah, you gotta force yourself because some of it's super, super weird and and I love know, it though and I can definitely see in the collected. I can definitely yeah. see the the early the influences in it in the early seasons of South Park like there were certain skits and like specific sketches I would watch that I'd be like oh they I can see where they got this in that South Park episode <laughs> yeah but, the so, animation yeah, can... style was similar to Terry Gilliam so they yeah. said that I believe they said that was a big inspiration for their animation style was Terry Gilliam. Yeah, um, the cutout style. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. I mean, there's really no one. I mean, that's the most obvious person to point to and and knowing that we all grew up on on that. That's that should be that's that's who gets credit, definitely. <laughs> hey, I'm not fat, I'm big bone. No, you're not, you're bleeding fat. You shut up, hippie. Put me down. Stop that, stop that. Tell this little fat kid to piss off. I'm not fat, I'm big bone. We did not start South Park right after 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 school, you know. I mean it there yeah. was there was like a lot of stuff that happened before that, you know, I mean, it, it the now spirit of Christmas, ex like the very first ones of those existed. And then there's this thing, American history that, that Trey did, um, uh, that won a student Academy award that happens just right out of this animation class that we were all taking. Um, you know, so there's those things. And then, you know, we did, you know, before South park, there were these, you know, pilots we did for Fox called time warped. Um, yeah. And so that was like, you know, two years of time. Hey, a pig. I'm going pig. I'm going, you stupid pig. I, I guess I was just curious what you, um, like specifically for talking about South Park, what, what were your like contributions in the beginning there? Like, what were uh, well, your roles on the, what was your role like <laughs> on that? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, so, I mean, the, the cartoon existed, you know, um, as the sort of like idea for a while that was sort of being pitched around with Fox. We were doing these time warped animations or when they were doing this, sorry, not animations, these time warp pilots. Um, and, uh, and so yeah, I've seen those. So there's this whole, I don't know, there's this whole ride up to, you know, us starting uh, the South Park pilot. There was, yeah, there was like this, a, a lot of stuff that went down before that, but then leading up to, a pilot to answer your question you know i was i worked as a production coordinator um really like i cut out a lot of cartmans and uh <laughs> trees um you know and uh i also um was tasked with tracking down primus primus was like the only band that like trey matt and i were like really agreed on um you know uh i'm like an old deadhead and matt loves you know more like the police um and trey's like elton john but we all love Primus, and um, and that was sort of deemed the perfect uh, band to do an opening song. Um, and so, you know, when we were doing this before the internet, so to track down Primus, you know, we went and bought a couple of CDs. Actually, we bought we had to buy like um, Holy Mackerel CDs, and then on the back that had his management company listed, and we sent a letter. I sent a letter to 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 our buddy David Lefkowitz at Lefkowitz Management saying with a VHS copy of spirit of Christmas um, saying, Hey, we're doing this comedy central pilot and we would love to have Primus do the opening song. And then, you know, a few weeks later, you know, we get a call from Les, Um, and that was amazing. Wow. You know, we were all fans of, of Primus and had been to lots of their concerts. And so we were a little starstruck by getting a call back from Les cause nobody knew who the hell we were at that point. Um, and so uh so that was that was amazing and it was even more amazing um was that uh less is a huge british comedy fan it turns out and so we had released cannibal the musical under its original title alfred packer the musical in the uk um the year before and you know i don't know like it was he and he so in any way he was on tour and he's like a big british comedy lover and just lover of british you know just tv culture and all that and so he collects 
DVDs and all, all this stuff and knows everything about British comedy. Um, and so he thought it was a British comedy or something. Anyway, he bought it and he was, and so it was amazing. That is that crazy. It, it hadn't even been released in the U S yet. So uh -huh. the fact that it, it uh -huh. that he had been in the UK, actually seen it and actually bought it was itself a Christmas miracle right there. That's awesome. Yeah, that's like fate. That was like meant to happen. <laughs> it was a meant to be kind of moment. The fact that he owned it, it was it was really mind blowing for us because we and we were like just kind of scratching our head because we we barely even understood, you know knew that it was released. We we yeah we had made a deal with this company Screen Edge before we agreed to have it for the cannibal release with trauma. So, um, Oh, I didn't realize so that. Anyway, that, um, that was amazing. And it was certainly meant to be at that point. And, um, and so he, they of course then did do the opening song for South park. Um, and, uh, and then I, I've gone on to do a, a bunch of projects with less sense and become good friends with them and all that. And, um, he's amazing. So yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Howdy. 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 Howdy do. Howdy. Howdy. Howdy do. Howdy. Howdy. Howdy do. Howdy. I saw Les not long ago, and it was kind of funny because you told me to tell him um if he likes to feed the ducks. Do you yeah, remember yeah. that? Yeah, I and I that. I told him that, and he's like, "No, but I uh I get what you're referencing," and I'm like, "Oh, I'm sorry, Jason McHugh told me to to ask you that," and he's like, "Oh yeah, you should really listen to what Jason tells you." <laughs> so that good. was cool nice nice yeah no i mean well that's of course you know it's definitely an electric apricot reference and he got uh -huh. that it's good um and yeah it's a perfect thing to say when you're starstruck yeah exactly <laughs> hey do you like to go to the zoo do you go to the zoo i don't go often do you but... like to feed the ducks in the park I, you know i'm not a big duck feeder i like ducks <laughs> yeah I, I can see that Cannibal was actually one of the reasons I got into making short short films when I was in high school and college because I was a big South Park fan that hit when I was like 13 and that mm -hmm. really impacted my life and then I went on to other movies that Trey and Matt did and I got to Cannibal and I still remember the first time I saw it but I I'm like I can do this and it turns out I couldn't <laughs> because I'm not making films right now well animated films but I'm not good at working with other people so much I work better on my own I mean look that's it, filmmaking's very very collaborative you know and you're like I'll say you know and you're working with people all the time and, and you know a big part of my job working with Trey and Matt was dealing with people you know and and like Trey I think one of the reasons he loves South Park doing more than live action like you haven't seen them do any live action you know um is because it's just like a it's like a people business and you just got people in your face all the time from every department and every walk of life you know um that it you know it takes it takes a village to make a live action feature you know um and all these different sorts of skill skill sets coming together and with different skill sets different personalities and different egos and so you're always just it's like as a producer it's always a balancing act you know and so um um and uh yeah and so i think that's what that's why that's exactly why trey loves animation i mean obviously it's a huge team making south park as well but it's different um especially now post covid like half the staff works out of their homes you know uh <clears throat> um and everyone can kind of like work on their bubble you know and i think that's definitely where trey's most most happy and uh and uh, you know extremely productive in that moment in that place you know <laughs> That totally would have been a touchdown. While we're on the topic of South Park, I was curious how you feel about uh, your character, Jason White, and his his untimely death. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, is, it was their last name. I didn't even know it. Yeah, character. Jason White. Last name. Jason White. Okay, well, the yeah. last name, the last name is recent, right? Like they he didn't mm -hmm. really used to have a last name until the last few years. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Okay. See, I now that thanks. Yeah, I didn't I did not know. That. It was a joke about white people, basically. Oh, it was yeah. like, yeah. yeah. They had <laughs> okay, to use okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> the whites. Um <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, look, I was super uh, you know, uh sad to see my character die, but it was actually um a hilarious death and episode to be killed upon and i don't i must have i can't remember if i did something to piss trey off in that <laughs> recent period right before that or not there must have been something but, um, but no uh 
yeah <laughs> no, i i'm still hopeful that like kenny maybe maybe i'll come back to life someday you know <laughs> like kenny yeah Resurrected. yeah death is not always know. permanent on the show you know, that's for sure <laughs> there's hope out there that i can maybe when he's not mad back. at you anymore <laughs> yeah exactly i'll bring you back <laughs> out of the doghouse I'll, 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 I'll get back on there um yeah no that's funny but yeah no it's like um because yeah I, I of course nobody told me that that there is going to be this you know um bald balding character named jason um on the balding show third grader so saw <laughs> that uh, character and then you know and then I was stoked. Then it'd be like, for me, it'd be like, I'd watch an episode and it'd be like, where's Waldo for me? You know, where's, where's Jason? Am I in the, <laughs> did I make That's the fun. show? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't get to do that, but I still love the show, even though I got killed. As a white Jason lived a challenged life. When I look out on this congregation, I can't help but think there's not a whole lot of people here. Do you still watch the show? Do you, you know keep what? up I with do. it? I do, but actually it's embarrassing in that I don't have Paramount Plus <laughs> right now. So, so I don't have every okay, stream. Half the people stream. don't. <laughs> yeah. I more for cable than I have in my whole life. Um, but I got to get it. And actually now, now that Christmas breaks here, I'm, I'm going to get Paramount Plus and uh, catch up on the last couple episodes. I haven't, I haven't seen the season. I've seen everything else though. So yeah. So, yeah, so I think the it. seasons are on HBO Max still or Max now, but um, I think oh, I next have year. Max. Yeah, I have Max, but but the new ones, you have to have Paramount Plus, right? Yeah, yeah the, the specials. specials. Yeah. Um, specials but, yeah, but but they're on the two different platforms, but, but I think 2025, right? Is when everything is going to be migrated to Paramount Plus. So, okay, because the, right. the Max deal is going to end. Mm. So, you guys know more about it. I'll be in one place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I think that sounds uh, sounds correct. And I have to get, I'm going to get it. It looks pretty good. Looks like there's some other good stuff on there. So, I'm a soccer nerd. So, it's got premier soccer. So, I like that. I know. Butters was trying to tell me something outside the house that this device is nothing but trouble. I think I know what he meant now. How could it be nothing but trouble? And yeah, do you, so you've been keeping up with it. Do you have a favorite episode? Mm. I mean, no, not really. I mean, I'll say I just like, I've been impressed that I, I feel like the show's like continued to stay good and relevant. And, um, you know, I've been- Yeah, that's, that's not an know, easy feat. It's like, you know, yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's just hard to, it's hard to, to do that for, over this course of many years, so. That's what I'm just kind of most generally impressed with is how well the fellows have just kept it going and improved, um, improved the show just like on all kinds of levels. Um, but you know, like, um, and I don't, and I suck at like the names of episodes, you know, um, but I think for me, you know, two favorites would be the one, um, that's like the heavy metal episode with Kenny. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah uh that the, i think it's a heavy metal episode to call that would <laughs> be that one and then definitely the other one for me um is the jam band one um because i had like direct input in, into that one actually and so uh because um i mean so trey first of all you know when we were when les was coming up for the concept of electric apricot um he was staying at, at one of Trey's places, um, vacationing and, um, and, uh, came back from this vacation all fired up to do electric apricot and, you know, a mockumentary about a jam band. And he called Trey about it and Matt and me. Um, and I was the one everyone knew would be the most excited to produce it. Cause I'm the deadhead, um, of the, of the group there. And I'd already worked with less a bunch. Um, um, but at that same moment that gave, Trey, the idea we should do uh we should do a South Park episode um you know with jam bands invading South Park. <laughs> um, oh, is that yeah. the die hippie yeah. die? That yeah, the hippie one. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, the one where he throws the guitar in and all the joints, so they got all the hippies locked <laughs> yeah. up. And yeah, most over them. And, and so anyway, I got a call from Matt telling me about the idea they're going to do, and I laughed because I knew that you know, less it just influenced the general idea for this episode. Um, but they're calling me to ask me what I, what was my, like the least, my least favorite, most noodly jam band that I could think of, you know, cause that's, you know, I was just getting that as a, a blank question. And for me, that was like string cheese and Umphreys McGee were the two jam bands that I don't care for as much. I'd like other ones. Um, so I kind of just flippantly flew through those two names out. Um, and then I talked to my my best friend Tony, who's a band manager from my other best friend's band, Vinyl. And um, 
and I was telling him about how this all went down and Tony got mad at me and he's like, no, dude, no vinyl vinyls. And I'm like, I love vinyl. They, he asked me what, you know, band I didn't like. And he's like, no vinyl <laughs> vinyl. I was like, okay, he's, he's trying to get vinyl in the show. Um, mm. and, and was successful at getting vinyl in the show. So if you see that track, so you see that show, there's a couple of the tracks. There's one track that is from Humphreys McGee. So I, even though I was dissing them, I did them a huge favor. Um, <laughs> and um, and uh, and then the other is from from vinyl. So I got our our friend's band in there. So that is some got, great fun facts about that episode. Some, yeah, there's some right. There's some fun facts. That's how <laughs> one random episode formed. And you know, the thing is, like South Park. I think Trey and Matt have said this before that the show's like a diary for them. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, it's, it, that's how it plays. It's like, you know, they're writing about like what's going on in the world currently, but it's also what's going on for them personally, you know? So it's like always like a mixture of those elements or what are influencing any given show. I think that's what keeps people watching. Like the, it keeps the uh, loyalty up because it feels, everything feels kind of like you have a personal connection with it for that yeah. reason. Oh, here, Kyle, you want to play with it a little while? Oh, psych, you don't get to. <laughs> oh, check it out, cute. So uh, is there a reason, like what, um, you don't, you, you only worked on, on season one. Is is there a reason that you like, did you go off to do other things or how come you don't work with them anymore? Uh, I mean, you know, it's like, I'm more or less, you know, like when in the, in the making of South Park, you know, like the, the 30 seconds to air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They talk about like, you know, it, it being a band, you know, well, I'm like the person that sort of more or less got kicked out of the band. More, <laughs> oh, you know? I mean, that's more or less what happened. You know, it's like mm. where um, I didn't really have a big role at South Park, you know, like doing a voice or anything like that. And my focus was all on live action stuff. So okay. I've started on making Orgasmo and Cannibal the Musical and these shows Time Warped. Um, and those all like, met with like you know doom and gloom endings more or less or, or went on to like kind of like cult them you know which is like sort of like i mean i mean it's it's kind of funny but like for like movies that have like longevity like orgasmo and especially cannibal hound they always have like this terrible opening release that's just like sort of like rocky and um and so uh, both Cannibal and Orgasm are both like those perfect examples where these movies that kind of like basically tanked and were like actual failures, you know, coming out of the gate. And they went on to have this really like um, amazing life. And so for me, like I still work on Cannibal to this day. I've made the joke that it's like the project that I was my first project and my last project. <laughs> um, and so I'm, um, yeah, so it's, it's just like, um, it's that's a that's a funny thing with that. And we'll talk. We can talk more about Cannibal, but you know, but so um, so but I, but I, the other kind of just odd thing about me and my career is that just I've stayed close to Trey and Matt, and uh, and they've financed projects and have worked together with them on different levels and different things. And so uh, even though I haven't really been a big part of actually the production of South Park, I've been only there in the very beginning. You know, um. I've had like a lot of influence on a lot of shows over the years just because of my proximity um, to the greater South Park family that, you know, makes it. And so I've had like um, a lot of bizarre influences over the show, um, you know, and even like one particular one, you know, that was like, again, that happened like 20 years ago. Um, you know, I've written about in a book and that, you know, and I've I've written this, you know, about the making of Cannibal the Musical. Um, and I have another book that's written. Yeah, there. Thank you. Thank you, Rye. Yeah, the Shippo I call the making of Cannibal. Yeah. So I have like I've written up like all of the my sort of stories that with with them and then beyond. And so I have kind of the making of the South Park pilot and Orgasmo completely written. But like I probably won't release that book for another like six years. And I would have already released it, but my grandma was alive and she knew about Orgasmo, you know, and she thought it was kind of funny, but like, but reading about like, you know, the ins and outs of like what we went through making that and just kind of like everything I was going through personally at the time is in this book. Um, and so it's, it's great. It's like also like a how to and a how not to for producing, um, and you know, Hollywood adventures, um, 
but I didn't want to release it then because my because she was alive. Um, and then she lived to be like 103. Um, wow. And she finally she did pass away at 103. But now I've got like kids set who are like six. I got six and eight year old boys. So I need them to kind of like get into like the later junior high level or high school before I release this book. Um, because of just the content is is wild, you know. Um okay. and so, but then after that, which is not done, um, but I've got a huge manuscript for <laughs> is the follow-up because I after after leaving South Park, I went on to uh, start this insane dot com 1.0 company called craptv.com. And oh, so I remember that. Um, yeah, me too. So yeah, we uh we made all kinds of pilots um and we did the orgasmo GVD um and we did uh it was just an insane company. We also did these um these events called the lap dance film festival uh one of like you know you've probably heard of the slam dance film festival well that's in 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 Spadoin cult you know I talk about crashing Sundance and basically mm -hmm. we crashed Sundance and and really like if we hadn't landed the time warped pilot I probably would have be a, I'd probably be a festival director at this point because mm -hmm. I was working with one of the gals that um that uh that had started that had done the MTV story about us. Um, and we were going to do the Undance Film Festival the, the following year. And we didn't only because I was on this Fox pilot. Um, and that's when Slam Dance started. But we were planning to come back. We were already talking about sponsors. We had like and Slam Dance just emerged. So if we had planned to do Undance, I would have been there to catch all the future Slam Dancers and have like a place for them to go and it'd be all set up. But as fate would have it, we got another pilot deal and that's, that's the direction I went. And then slam dance emerged and it's amazing. It's like a huge force of nature that's still going to this day. And, but at that time, um, because of what we did and then because slam dance emerged and then there's some other players that were attacking park city, this kind of like barnacle film festival culture emerged. And so we did do the undance film festival the next year. And that's when we had Orgasmo was in Sundance playing as a midnight movie. And then Slam Dance had invited Cannibal the Musical to, by that point, we had struck a film print for Cannibal. And so it was invited to play at the, um, the, as the premiere of Slam Dance. And at the after party for that, we had the Undance Film Festival, which was playing in a closet um, at this party that Troma Films was throwing for Cannibal. And at that point, that's when Lloyd Kaufman got the idea. He said, I should do my own film festival. So he started coming up with Troma Dance. And then the next year we were back with the Lap Dance Film Festival. And we did Lap Dance for three years. And then Troma Dance emerged. And they went on for many more years after that. And um, it was really fun. It was an insane dance party at the time. So it was dance anarchy. But since then, <laughs> most of these sort of sideshow festivals have fallen to the wayside. And it's now it's just mostly slam dance and, and sun dance again. But slam dance has remained, which is amazing to me. Well, it's taking on no dance and sleaze dance and slum dance, and it's featuring the sound of one hand clapping.